right, hey there guys, it's TC Mabe, I'm back. Let me get back in here, and just real quick, I'm going to connect to my channel so I can see any potential streamers, so bear with me for a second. Thank you guys for tuning in over the last couple days, the few of you that have stopped by. Hopefully, uh, been able to work through some issues with you and help you out with something. But tonight, I'm going to be working on a couple things with Paragon Assets, and uh, I had a follower or a, maybe not a follower, but a watcher who had suggested that there were some issues with the Paragon tutorial that I'd put out quite some time ago, and I came up with maybe something that might help that person with a solution for some of the other characters that are in there. So we shall see. Give everybody a second here to join in. Actually, let's just go ahead and get rolling here. Let me go back to the the comment. So the comment out here was on my video for where's it at here? Bring this up. Some of you may have seen this tutorial in the past. This was for UE4 Paragon for adding new animations from Mixamo and Venios maybe. He had sent out a comment there saying it's not perfect, may only work best with certain Paragon characters. With Phase, for example, arms are twisted, and with Countess, the hips are too big in the animation, but nice try. So what I wanted to do was try and go back and take a look at some of those things and see if we could figure it out. And what I did come up with is uh, I pulled in Paragon Phase, and in the animations for Paragon Phase, I put a Mixamo folder, and you can see here if I do... Phase Hip Hop Dancing. This is one of the ones I downloaded from Mixamo. We can see our Phase character there. And I don't really notice any distortion of her arms or her body. And same thing if I go back. I have a Hip Hop Dancing 2. And nothing really going on there to indicate any distortion or problems. So I think that this may work for that user. Anevios or Avenios, Avenios, I don't know. So I'm going to show you what I did to get this to work, and hopefully it helps somebody else out. So number one, what we want to do here is we want to go into the character for Paragon Phase in the Animations directory. And what I did is I looked for the idle animation. And this idle animation is a pretty straightforward, basic representation of that character which should be pretty easy for Mixamo to understand. So if you go to that and you right click on it and say asset actions and export you can export this out and I I had a thing here called idle but I will update that to say um, this is phase idle and that's out on my desktop and then I just picked Reset the default on here, which is FBX 13, 2013, and no other options. And I said, go ahead and export that. And I'm not bringing over the preview mesh or anything. I'm just bringing over the bones. And then on Mixamo, if you log in, you can see here I uploaded that character. But basically, you would say upload, select character file, and you would go and get your phase idle FBX. Let this thing digest it. And when it gets to the end there, it should do a little bit of mapping. And after it gets done, it should give you a preview of what your character is going to look like. And then you just acknowledge that and say OK. Some of these things take a little while. I apologize. The computers are running kind of slow. It might be because everybody in the world's uh, over in New Jersey or in the United States anyway are probably online killing time. After 8 o'clock we have a curfew over here right now. So that's why I'm doing these live streams. They're not really tutorials or lessons or anything like that. The tutorials and lessons I try and make a little bit more concise and to the point. These are kind of just me noodling around with stuff in the background that people may have had questions about and seeing if I can help figure some stuff out. So... Uh, please be kind in your thumbs ups and thumbs downs out there. Just trying to help. But if you have suggestions, I'm always uh, more than open to see them. But basically, after this gets done processing your character, which normally doesn't take that long, it's going to go back and give you a preview. 
and you just say next and next and then it's going to bring your character in where you should be able to say where's my center reset camera okay and then I have the character bones here jumping around and dancing and everything and f I picked intentionally picked some of these these uh, reddish brown colored animations because these are for the the bots so if you look at the bot there's a uh, I think there's an X bot and a Y bot that are on here and if you look at Y bot uh, well, wait a minute, I might have a filter on here. I think it's called Ybot. Maybe one word. And I think there's also an Xbot. It doesn't say the... I forget what the names of these things are, but, but basically there's a uh, there's a male and a female skeleton in there. And so whatever animations you're looking for, if you if you look at this one here, it's the female version, which might have a slightly different hip structure or whatever. Maybe that's where one of the issues were. But anyway, if I apply this animation to that that skeleton, you can see that it's working the way that it should. And if we download this, I just use the defaults. And you say download, and it's going to ask you for a location and name. Typically, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to call this phase underscore capoeira. And then in my project, I'm going to bring this into my Mixamo folder. So I'll just minimize this off into the background or reduce it a little bit. So I can get to that phase capoeira, uh, capoeira animation. And when you go to bring this in, you just drag it and drop it into your folder there. And your skeleton, you're just going to pick your phase skeleton. And since I exported an animation from the phase skeleton idle and took that up to Mixamo and let it map everything, it should match that structure coming back down and keep everything intact. So I'm going to say use the phase skeleton. And the only thing I flip on is convert scene unit and just say import all. And for some reason lately this has been bringing in two different files. One is called uh, the name of the thing that you downloaded and the second one is called the same thing with a take underscore one or something or a take one um, name included there so I've been deleting those I don't know what they're for it's not something I've seen in the past and I don't know what's changed but we're gonna let this go through and see if we can help identify that and then what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll look at the uh the one for count s so we'll do the same thing and see if that works and hopefully these two things will get that user straightened out with being able to add additional animations for these paragon characters when i did my last video i actually uploaded a skeleton that was um modified to work with mixamo and someone on the internet had taken the root bone out of that so that it would work with the mixamo characters and that worked out pretty well for a lot of the characters, but some of the ones who have some more complex bone hierarchies and things like that may not map properly, and hopefully this solution fixes that. So you can see here is the uh, Unreal Take. I'm going to delete that one. I don't need that. And I'm just going to keep the one that says Capoeira. And if we look at it on our character... See, I'm not seeing any problems with the arms or any distortions of the bones or the body or anything like that. And if you want to check these out in context with your scene or whatever, one of the handy things you can do is just drag these out into the world. And when you hit play, you're going to be... Well, I'm in there as, as the same character, but you're going to be able to watch how their animations are and see them in relationship to the rest of your your game world or whatever so the only thing I would say is maybe the character looks a little bit shorter but I can't tell because they're kind of crouched down they got these bent leg poses probably pretty much the same height if they were to stand up straight this character's a little straighter yeah looks like they're the same size and everything nothing's really been distorted so again hopefully that helps whoever was having the issues there 
um, with any of these Paragon assets. Now, what, I want to do some more work with these Paragon characters because I really like the way that they lean in when they run. And I would like to leverage some of that for some other characters. So, anyway, I'm going to get out of that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into my Epic Launcher. I'll go into my library and I'm going to go down here and look for Countess. And I'm going to say add Countess to the project. Show all projects. And I want to put that in my, I had a Paragon 3P, which is just a third person character project. So we'll let that go ahead and load in. Take a second because there's a lot of stuff in there. Again, for those of you who have uh, watched these live streams or tuned in, these are not my normal tutorials, which I try and make pretty concise and comprehensive. These are more like just random things that are coming up and just doing some workflows to try and see if we can solve some of the problems. What I may do is break these out into individual tutorials later. If something uh, you know comes out of any of these sessions, it could be more useful in a more compact format. So if you're watching these and you, you like the content or whatever, you see something specific you want to have turned over into a tutorial or you think would help somebody else, by all means, let me know. I'm just on here killing time while we're waiting for the viral outbreak in the United States to calm down a little bit. But we just, once we get our Paragon Countess down here, we'll go back into our project. Let me take a second. Give it a minute here. Everything on my end is running really slow. I think I have to clean up some hard drive space. Okay, so we got that in our project now. And if we go back into our folder, we should be able to see that we have the Paragon Countess file folder here. So we're going to have characters and heroes, and then the Countess, and she has her own animations. I'm going to right-click and say New Folder, create a Mixamo folder under there. And what I'm going to do real quick in my 3P project, before I do anything else with this, I'm going to go into the third-person blueprints. We go right to third person game mode and under default pawn class. I'm going to change this over to the Countess player character. And take a second to do that. But if you switch your default pawn class in here and you get rid of your um, default way to convert this, you have the animations and the blueprints that are set up for your character um, right here. But it does take a second to load them over and. How it all goes here. I'm hoping tonight to get the, to get this wrapped up for this uh, other user and move on to some other stuff. But I may cut this short tonight because I got a bunch of stuff I'm doing working on the house, and the only time I really get a chance to do it is late at night. So I might uh, wrap this off if nobody else is getting on, which is fine. Again, this is just for killing time and hopefully helping some people. But maybe somebody watching the playback will enjoy it. So now that we've got our Countess player character on there and let it compile the shaders, I'm just say compile and save. And if I hit play, it might be a little slow, but it should bring the Countess in. And she's not going to look right because we don't have all of our shaders here yet. But I want to get this in here just for a reference as to how she should normally look before we go change anything else. And the first thing I'm pretty sure is going to happen is if you see that hair moving around, I don't know if that's going to work with the other animations. I'm not sure how that, all that stuff's wired up. might be when you pull the animations down, it's going to break that, but we'll see. I haven't played with this character before. But we'll let the shaders compile real quick, and uh, 
That should be happening in the background. And what I'll do while that's working is I will go into the Countess's folder for her default animations, and I'm going to try and find her idle animation, which should be... I think you can just go right in here and just type in idle and see if she has a normal one. There's idle straight. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that might be good enough. Let's see. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say uh, Asset Actions Export. And that's an FBX file. And we're going to call this Countess underscore straight. And we're going to send it out to our desktop and save it. And again, I'm using default settings here and just export this out. And we'll see if this works. Now what we may have to do is we may have to find a version of this that doesn't have the weapons in hand. Or we may have to convert one of these over to not have the weapons showing up. I don't know if that's going to break anything on the Mixamo side. But the user's comment was around... Let's go back here. With Countess, the hips are too big in the animation. So that's why I wanted to pull that in to whatever its default was so we could really see what the Countess's normal hips look like. A lot of her shaders are compiled now. So I can see there that, I mean, her hips don't look too big in the, in the original. All right, so let's go over here to Mixamo and we're going to upload a character. And again, I didn't export any of the meshes or anything like that. I just want the skeleton. So I'm going to go here and here and get the Countess idle straight. Let that thing upload and hopefully it maps. Again, those those knives or swords or whatever may become an issue in the animation. Or it may ignore them entirely and, and break that. And then we'd have to go back in and add weapons to that character. So I kind of feel like if you're playing with those characters, you'd end up getting rid of their weapons anyway so that you could switch out different weapons down the road or maybe have a copy of them without the weapons that you could do that too and then one with their default weapons or you know whatever your preferences are I see somebody joined in there i don't know who's out there but hello and hope you're doing well let this thing process for a minute wish us luck here we're trying to fix a user's issue with Paragon assets for those of you just joined the stream and again if you have uh, you know specific tutorials you're interested in or something to uh, to maybe help along let me know I've really been spending a lot of time working on trying to get Mixamo animations to work with various character types on the uh, on the game there alright so there's our there's our skeletal preview and I'm just going to say next and next. And then let's get... Well, we could use the same animations and see if that changes anything. I don't think it will. But let's do something a little bit different. Let's go and get maybe... Let's do a belly dancing one. See how long that animation is. Looks like it's got a lot of frames in it. Crank the speed up a little bit. Alright, let's try that one. We'll download it. It's going to take a while probably to get that to work right. But it might be a good representation. If this one works, maybe a lot of the other ones would work. So we'll call that Countess Belly Dancing. I'm going to put it on my desktop just so it's easy to get to. Save it. And then we're going to go into our Mixamo folder here for the Countess. And I'm going to get that Countess belly dancing file, drag it in there, and just assign it to the Countess skeleton. And I'm going to leave this on exported time and convert scene unit and say import all. And then we'll just slowly sit here and wait while the thing grinds through all the different animations. Yeah, there's 14,401 of those, so the thing's going to take a couple of minutes probably to process. 
like I said, if this works and uh, doesn't distort your characters, it, it gives you a lot of different options to to download from Mixamo. What I normally like to do with these things, while that thing's processing in the background, what I normally like to do is I like to go in here and look for the word pack. And you'll see, you know, where you have 25, 35 animations all in a in a cluster. But if you get a character like this, where you get the animations to work the way you want them to, come back in here and grab these packs for that character and then just save them. You don't know how long this is going to stay up, but it's a really good spot to get all kinds of things. So when I'm done with this live stream for fixing this particular issue for the Paragon and Mixamo animations that that user had recommended, I'm actually going to end this live stream and start another one. And I'm going to retitle that because it's going to be more focused back on the uh, thing we were doing last night with the Sinti characters and the Polygon assets and the platformer game kit and all that kind of stuff. So I want to end these and retitle them and make them the, uh, the right kind of thing here. But... Let's see how that's doing in the background. Yeah, still processing. It's taking forever. Probably should have picked a smaller one for this. But again, I think if you get something that has a lot of movement in it, a lot of different frames, and it works well, it should be an indicator that most of the other stuff's going to work well, too. But while that's processing, maybe we'll go and look for another smaller animation or something. Let's do, uh, let's go into combat. And the, con the Countess is a sword fighter or something, so let's see if we can find a sword animation actually I wonder if they have a two-handed I don't think I don't see too many two-handed weapon animations on these things the two-handed sword a little different than what I'm saying Yeah, nothing really going on there. But we'll come back to it. Let's see. Alright, this should be pretty pretty close here. It's just got quite a few animation tracks on, on that character. Sorry this takes a while. But I'm pretty sure it's quicker than doing all this by hand. You know, doing these conversions and everything. If it works. If it doesn't work, then it takes forever. Maybe instead of two, maybe the word is actually dual. Let's see if there's a dual. There you go, dual weapon combo. Because the Countess had two weapons. And that's only 109 of those, so I'll download that one also. To the desktop. And do yourself a favor and name these things in some usable way for you because it makes your life a lot easier in the, in the long run. So that'll be the next one we'll drag in here and do the same thing with once this is done. Dual weapon combo attack. What's the word combo look like in here? So there's another dual weapon combo. Is it the same one? I think it is. Actually, dual weapon combo. Yeah, it's the only one. Two handed club. That's a nice move. Knee jabs to an uppercut. Guaranteed to knock somebody up. Let's 
All right, we're getting close now. Again, if you pop in and you feel like saying hi, I'd be you know, more than happy to talk to you here. I can see you in the live chat if you if you send something in. If you're watching from a device where you don't have chat capability, that's fine too. But for those of you just joining or watching this later on, the again the idea was that a user said that the animations for Paragon in my previous tutorial video for adding new animations for Mixamo, they said that uh, this didn't work in all cases. And some of the issues that they had was that the phase character had twisted arms. And with Countess, the hips were too big. So what we did instead of this was um, we exported a file from the character's animation sets. We exported that out into a, uh, a simple skeleton file that we could upload into Mixamo and, and map some new animations to. And we're just hoping that when we bring this in that this works. So I'm going to delete the one that says take. I did that earlier. And we're just going to keep the one we're just going to keep the one that has the uh, thing on it. Alright, so there we go. We got her swords back. And she's doing some belly dancing moves. And from what I can tell, her hips don't look any bigger than they did a minute ago. Now let's uh, verify that. We can do that by dropping that character out into our world. And when we hit play, they'll be playing their animations. And then we can go and walk around and look. So I'm pretty sure that that worked out well. And the nice thing too is it didn't mess up anything with the hair physics. The hair's still whipping around, and uh, I guess the cloth and everything like that's working as well. Now, the, f the hands look a little weird because the hands are straight out and the swords are still attached to them, which uh, that is a byproduct of the animation not having closed hands. And there is a way that you can fix that if you really want to go through the, uh, the process. What you would do is you would double-click this... Um, this file, get that up into your animator, into your sequence here. You pause this, go back to the first frames on it, and if you zoom in, you can go to the skeleton tree, and you go in here where the fingers are. So you have a hand, and then you're going to have individual fingers. At the ends of those fingers, that's where these things bend. And you could, if you wanted to, you won't see it there, but see how I can bend that finger around? Take it back to zero. Let's get a, let's get a uh, index finger here. So here's the index finger. See, we can bend these fingers down at their different joints and actually wrap that right around the, the item. And then you can go in here, when you like where everything's at, you say key and apply. And it would basically close all those, uh, all those together. Now what I've never tried, I don't know if you can do it or not, but what I've never tried, let's do a control Z. Put that back where it belongs. I haven't tried taking the first part of all of these together. I don't know if you can rotate them all together. Now, it looks like it's only the one that you're highlighted on. So it'd be nice if you could grab all these and wrap them around there. But if you do this, you know, you only end up doing it probably one time to make it work. And uh, you can zoom in on here and kind of zero in on what you're dealing with and see if you can get all that to happen. But you would just take these little, these little joints and everything, identify them over here, and again, wrap them underneath there. And then you just hit key and apply, and it's going to save it. So, to me, I think that this will solve the problem that that user was having as far as the the way that they said that it was distorting different things. I think that solves that. So, let me know if you disagree, but 
I think these characters look just as normal as they did in their other in their other uh, versions. I don't see where anything's been really modified too much. And hopefully that helps some people get some new animations on their characters. I'll do this last one here with the combo attack, and we'll see what that does. I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to assign it to the Countess Skeleton. And again, just leave everything in here. Just make sure Convert Scene Unit's on. Say Import All, and we'll just give it a second to go through and uh, analyze all that for us. This one's going to be a little quicker, but still long. I don't know if it's my computer. It hasn't been rebooted in a while. Maybe I have a bunch of uh, stuff going on here. Got a lot of things open. But these Paragon characters are great. I mean, they look wonderful. And I know a lot of had a pretty decent fan base when they shut that game down. I guess it probably had a lot to do with uh, Fortnite taking off and making them a lot of money and and then they released all these assets out to the world. But, you know, if you go through the folders, there is already a ton of animations in there. And you can kind of go through and see how they did some of their weapon combo attacks and stuff. And I think with a little bit of noodling around, you could probably go through and, and make something pretty uh, usable out of that. But I definitely recommend going out here to the Mixamo site finding some animations for your characters and, and again download all those packs it looks a little weird here but and uh, if you have issues with with these you know with your root bones everything that you send out to Mixamo or from Mixamo to um, Unreal Engine if you do this on the individuals you get an option here where you can click in place and you're pretty much going to want to do that because what that does is it forces the root bone to stay in line with the capsule so that as you move the character around and you play these animations, everything stays together. If you don't do that, you get what I had problems with on my other character that I'm going to go to at the end of this live stream, which is when I hit a sequence for an animation, it plays that, and as a result, it moves the character, and then it rubber bands it back to where the character started from because... All the movement's not happening to the capsule, it's happening to the animation frames and moving the skeleton out of line with the, uh, you know, with where the capsule's at. So, again, if you get a chance for these, you can hit in place. And if you have, um, you know, if you have these things where, like, you say, okay, well, my character's actually, you know, this guy here is holding his weapon in his left arm or left hand and he's triggering it with his right hand, say. So, but you can hit mirror, and it'll draw, it'll switch the bones around. So now that character would be holding the weapon in the right arm and shooting with the left hand. So for whatever reason, if you have a character's, um, you know, left or right-handed, and you want to switch these around, a lot of these do have a mirror on them, and it also changes what side. So like, you know, again, if you do a dodge, you can mirror that dodge and go in the opposite direction. That way he's dodging back and to the left and this one is dodging back and to the right so. so hopefully that helps let's go see if this processed any basically while this thing processes I just go and kill time looking at the same stuff over and over again I don't know if it helps anybody or not these characters are fairly complex if you look at their skeletal structure they have a lot of stuff going on a lot of bones in there Give it another couple of minutes. And once that's done, once that's done, we're going to table this in the live stream and go back to the one I was working on the other day, as I said earlier. Or I might end this and just go work on my house. We're, uh, my wife and I were in the middle of doing a bunch of remodeling, and then we got really tied up and busy with a bunch of things, and here lately though with the viral pandemic in the united states we've been forced to be home after 8 p.m so we've been working on the house late at night and trying to get everything done so hopefully we get that knocked out pretty soon all right our animation is done processing and 
Again, I just get rid of the one that says take on it. It usually says like take one or something. So here's the dual weapon combo. It looks nice. Okay. Now you can see here, that's exactly the problem I was talking about. See that? When I downloaded the dual weapon combo, I didn't take into account that the animation had a, uh, a movement to it. So if I go back to dual and I find that dual weapon combo again, see that one's moving and there's no in place for that. So I wouldn't recommend using that one because it's going to give you a lot of trouble. There is a way that you could take this downloaded FBX animation, you can take that into uh, the Mixamo or into the uh, software for um, Blender and there's a root bone converter that's in there and if you go to my folder or not my folder but if you go to my channel and you look at my videos some of my recent videos I had a thing in here for adding in a Mixamo root bone using Blender 2.8 and then how to clean up the file at the end of that if it causes you any issues both of these videos would solve that problem that we're seeing there where that character is moving around without being able to freeze it in place on the root bone. So hopefully uh, hopefully you get a chance to, to look at that and it, and it fixes it for you. But that's not, the in, that's not the thrust of what we're worried about here. What we want to look at is did this distort the character and bring it in properly you know, or whatever. So if I drop this countess out there with the dual weapon thing, we just hit play. We should see... She's just going to keep playing that, but see how she'll she'll rubber back rubber band back to where she started because that uh, root bone's not moving with her, and we could fix that by adding a uh, in place or a root bone to it, and then inside of the animation. You know, you would go in here to the asset details, and there's a section here for forcing a root lock or enabling root motion. Let's see, if you do it here without adding the right bone, see what that did to her? So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do it this way. And I don't think any of these other settings really fix anything like that. Maybe if you tell it not to use a normalized root. Nah. You gotta you pretty much have to go in there and put the root bone in there and fix it the right way. But at least it's not distorting the character. That was the thrust of this entire um, analysis here. It doesn't make her hips look too big. And her animations are working. So, I'm going to end this live stream because I think that solves the problem for that user. And I will go I will go back to uh I will go back to that user and tell them that, that video is up there and then I'll come back to this and we'll do uh we'll do a little bit more work on the next one. So, I'll be back on in a little while hopefully. And uh thanks again for watching. But I'm just going to wrap this video up so that we can go into a different topic. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.